This is a video on reaction mechanisms. The overall progress of a chemical reaction can be represented at the molecular level by a series of elementary steps or elementary reactions. In other words, when we write out a chemical equation, we basically see the reactants and the products, but it really doesn't show us what happens in order for the reactants to become products. In some reactions, it just really happens in one, what we call an elementary step. The reactants come together, they form the products, and boom, okay? Some, in many other reactions though, reactants come together and form some kind of intermediate in between in a first step. And then that intermediate can react with other reactants in a secondary step, and maybe then we end up with the product. So the reaction might actually take place in two steps which are called elementary steps or elementary reactions. A reaction might also take, step in, take place excuse me, in three steps or four steps depending upon the type of reaction that it is. And so the, the, together all of the elementary steps combined represent the mechanism of the particular reaction. The sequence of elementary steps that leads to product formation is the reaction mechanism. So here's a reaction. 2NOs plus O2 reacts to form 2NO2. N2O2 is detected during the reaction. So how is N2O2 detected during the process of the reaction if we have a reaction in which NO is reacting with O2 to form NO2? Well, it is thought that the reaction takes place in two steps. First, two NO molecules in the first elementary step react with each other to form the N2O2, which again can be detected during the process. Then there's thought in a second elementary step that the N2O2 molecule that is formed now reacts with the oxygen to form the NO2. Why talk about reaction mechanisms like this, my friends? Well, of course, you would obviously think that it's going to affect the rate of the reaction because if a reaction is taking place in multiple steps, then obviously the reaction won't be going as quickly as it would be in a single step. Also, sometimes one step is faster and the other step might be slower. So if one step is faster and one step is slower, which step is the one that determines the rate? Well, it is the slow step it determines the rate. Think about it like this. If you were doing a job and you had to do it in multiple steps, if one of those jobs, if one of those steps, excuse me, in the job were slower than the rest, it would slow down the whole process. The same idea. If one of the rate elementary steps or one of the elementary steps has a slower rate than the others, that's the one that determines how fast the reaction can go. The overall reaction now, as we can see, is the reaction up above, in which we can cancel out the N2O2 here, and we cancel it out here. The N2O2 in this has a special name, as we cancel those out. It's called an intermediate. So we see that the N2O2 is a product in an earlier step and a reactant in a later step. And Whoops, somebody forgot the plus sign that goes right there. So that makes this an intermediate. Intermediates are species that appear in a reaction mechanism, but not in the overall balanced equation. An intermediate is always formed in an early step and consumed in a later step. What's our intermediate? The N2O2. The N2O2 was produced in an earlier step and then consumed in a later step. Molecularity of a reaction is the number of molecules reacting in an elementary step. A unimolecular reaction is a reaction in which it takes place with an L or the elementary step contains one molecule. A bimolecular reaction, the elementary step contains two molecules. And a termolecular reaction, the elementary step has three molecules in it. A unimolecular reaction, a single molecule reacting to form products. The rate is equal to K, 
times the concentration of A. A bimolecular reaction, two molecules. In this case, it's two different molecules, but it could be two molecules that are the same. It doesn't matter what the molecules are as long as there are two of them, and that makes it a bimolecular step. And of course, in this case, the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. And again, there's that, that idea of a bimolecular step containing two atoms that are the same. The rate is equal to K times A squared. Now, I know that you're probably sitting there thinking, huh, before, earlier on, in a different video, he said that the power to which A and B are raised to is not dependent upon the coefficients. Well, that's true for the overall reaction, but it is not true for the elementary steps. In an elementary step, we can write the rate law for every elementary step in a mechanism. We can do so by just looking at the coefficients. So the rate law for an elementary step is dependent upon the coefficients. Here, this is A, and you can consider it to have a coefficient of 1, so A is raised to the first power. Here we have A and B, and of course A has a coefficient of 1, B has a coefficient of 1, so A and B are raised also to the first power. Here in this reaction, though, this bimolecular reaction, we have A and A, which is technically 2A. So what it's saying is, is that 2A reacts to form products. And if 2 is the coefficient in front of A, then the power to which A is raised to is also 2. Now again, only true for the elementary steps in a mechanism, not true for the reaction itself. Writing plausible reaction mechanisms. The sum of the elementary steps must give the overall balanced equation for the reaction. The det rate determining step should predict the same rate law that is determined experimentally. Now remember we said the slowest elementary step is the one that's going to decide how fast the reaction goes. So whatever the rate law is for the slowest elementary step, that is considered to be the rate law for the overall reaction because the slowest elementary step is the rate determining step and it should predict the same rate law that is determined experimentally for the overall reaction. The rate determining step is the slowest step in the sequence of steps leading to product formation. Sequence of steps in studying a reaction mechanism. First, you measure the rate of the reaction. Then, you formulate the rate law, and then you possibly postulate the mechanism. We're going to work backwards. We're going to take a me mechanism and postulate the rate law. That's generally what we like to do, work backwards. The experimental rate law for the reaction between NO2 and CO to produce CO and CO2 is rate is equal to the concentration of, I'm sorry, the rate law K times the concentration of NO2 squared. The reaction is believed to occur in two steps. The first step, NO2 plus NO2, reacts to form NO and NO3. And in the second step, NO3 plus CO react to form NO2 and CO2. So what is the equation for the overall reaction? Well, if we cancel out those things that we can cancel out, particularly the NO3 here, which is formed in an earlier step, but consumed in a later step, and it's considered to be an intermediate, we get a reaction that looks like this. So here's the overall reaction. What is the intermediate? And of course, we kind of mentioned it before. It's the NO3 because it's formed in an earlier step and consumed in a later step. What can you say about the relative rates of steps one and step two? Well, if you look at the rate law for the overall reaction, is it consistent with this step two or is it consistent with step one the rate law for step one should be the same as the rate law for the overall reaction 
the rate law for step two is not the same because the step two has CO in it and we see we don't have CO here in the rate law. Step one has NO2 in it and it's got two of them so that technically the coefficient in front if we just put them together and put a two out in front we'd have a two as a coefficient so the rate is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 raised to the second power which would represent the coefficient that we would have if we put these two together and therefore it makes more sense that this rate law is the same rate law as step one so step one is the rate determining step the slow step and state two excuse me step two is a faster step see rate is equal to k times no squared is the rate law for step one so step one must be the rate determining step the slower step chemistry in action femtochemistry here we have this molecule reacting to form this molecule it's a vinyl molecule we get two of them we see the, the activation energy that occurs and the potential energy of the reactants and the products and we see that the reactants and the products basically have the same amount of potential energy here the process occurs in a multi-step system and if the process occurs in a multi-step mechanism first the reaction occurs and produces this species which is represented here and so the activation energy is absorbed the old bonds break the new bonds form we slide down and there's the intermediate so it's not a transition state like no like we would normally see it's at the at that point at the top here which we would exist we would exist as a transition state and we would have um, the activated complex here it's an actually an intermediate and now the intermediate reacts follows the energy curve and produces the products so it's a two-step mechanism as opposed to a one-step mechanism and that's the end of this video and we're gonna stop and we're gonna save catalysis for another day and we also have some other um, examples that we'd like to show you in class so we'll talk to you later bye